Why is gauze such a horrible dressing? We're going to review what an ideal dressing is, and I'm going to tell you why gauze isn't the best. It's going to be a short video. We're going to get right to it today at Citizen Surgeon. All right, so I have gauze right here, and we're going to be talking about why this is not the best dressing, especially when we're talking about trying to create an ideal environment for wound healing. Now, I did a bunch of videos on wound healing. Check out the Wound Healing 101 video, and in fact, I did a video that went through all of the different dressings. But I wanted to break it down. I wanted to get simple and get specific on what this is good for and what it's not so good for. So when we look at wound healing, what do we want? Well, we want a nice, moist environment. We want good blood flow. We want to avoid infection. We want to limit inflammation. And we also want to prevent wound disruption. We want to protect that healing wound bed. So what does an ideal dressing look like? Well, in the dressing video, I went over this list. And this is what an ideal dressing can do. Okay, so an ideal dressing does moisture control. An ideal dressing limits bacterial colonization. An ideal dressing enhances epidermal migration. It promotes angiogenesis. An ideal dressing has good gas exchange, okay, to provide oxygen, release CO2 from the wound. It controls the temperature of the wound. It acts to help debride the wound safely, protect that healing wound bed. It also provides protection. It also is sterile, non-toxic, and non-allergenic. Okay, so those are all the features of an ideal dressing. So gauze is not an ideal dressing because it hardly does any of that stuff. Maybe you could argue that it protects a wound, but I would say that it really doesn't, okay? So what are the nasty things about gauze? Well, there's no moisture control, okay? So when gauze gets wet, then it dries out, okay? So classically, we would talk about wet to dry dressings, and why would we do that? Well, we'd put moist gauze, wet gauze, into a wound. We'd let it sit there. We'd let it dry out, hoping that when we remove the gauze, we would take away bacteria, dead debris. But what we're finding is when this dries out and we disrupt the wound, we're going to ruin that healing bed. Okay, so it doesn't provide moist control. It can disrupt a wound, and then it's painful to remove. There are no antibacterial properties of gauze. So it's not going to, doesn't have any silver in it, doesn't have any other features that might be antibacterial. So it's not going to help there. And if we leave it too long, it might even promote bacterial growth. The other thing that I don't like about gauze is when it gets wet, or let's say it gets bloody, or there's a lot of exudate, it can get really small. And when it gets really small, if you have a big wound, you could lose gauze into a wound, and then you have a foreign body. And then that wound's not going to heal at all. And finally, there's no hemostasis. So if you do have bleeding from granulation tissue or anything like that, gauze isn't going to help, okay? So what is gauze good for? Is there anything good? Well, sometimes gauze is all you have, okay? And so if this is all you have, then with frequent dressing changes and keeping the gauze moist, you can help protect the wound with the gauze, okay? Create a reasonable healing environment, but it needs to be changed often so that it doesn't dry out, right? When would I specifically use gauze? Well, I would specifically want to use gauze if indeed I had an ideal dressing on a wound and then I layered a few pieces of gauze to protect that ideal dressing. And we can talk about some examples of more ideal dressings in a future video, or you can check out that wound healing video on dressings. I'll put a link to that up there. Okay, so I'll use it to protect the wound. The other thing I'll do is let's say we don't have these individual pieces, but let's say I have a very long or I have a nice roll of Curlex. Okay, well, if I have Curlex and I have a really big soupy wound, okay, so maybe it was uh, a necrotizing wound and it's just a lot of necrotic debris and pus, I might lay that wet Curlex or moist Curlex into the wound for the first day, do twice daily dressing changes until I get some control. But then I'm going to want to switch over to something like 
a negative pressure wound therapy, like a vac dressing or something like that, okay? Because I don't want to leave gauze in there too long because it's not a very good dressing. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that today. That was just a quick video on gauze and why this is really limited in its usefulness for wound healing. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. As always, study hard, stay safe. I'll see you next time.